Today we're going to talk about how to manage your anxiety and your stress and hopefully how to overcome your anxiety. And so what I hope you get from the video is a deeper understanding of what anxiety actually is, what are the causes of anxiety, and also how our lifestyle plays a big role in our anxiety and stress in our day-to-day -day lives. And then in the last section, I'm going to go into all the best stuff that's made a real difference for me over the last four years of researching and trialing. So I hope you get something from that as well. And because it's such an important subject, I feel, especially at the moment, next week's all going to be about how to help someone else when they're experiencing anxiety and when they're going through a panic attack. So welcome to The Power of Helping. My name is Ruben Wax and I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they're then in a better place to empower and support the people around them. In my video about meditation a few weeks ago, I spoke about this statistic from the charity Mind who said that on average in the UK, one in four people will experience a mental health issue in the next 12 months. So it's gonna be really beneficial to understand more about anxiety, whether you're experiencing it now, or you know people who are, or whether you just wanna improve your mental health so you reduce the chances of experiencing it later. In essence, anxiety is a fear of uncertainty, so understanding more about it is gonna be a great start to reducing the symptoms, because the more you know about it, the more you're gonna feel like you have control, and there are ways of helping you reduce the feelings that you're feeling. For me, I found the more I know about it, the better I feel, and that was most true after not speaking to anyone about how I felt for a year, but then when I finally went to speak to a doctor and they diagnosed me with chronic stress and anxiety, although that was really challenging to hear, it finally made me feel like I have support, I know what's going on in me, and also there's actionable steps now that I can take to reduce the feelings that I'm feeling. But just to preface, it's really important to remember that everyone is individual, so some things might work for you, some things might not, and if you do need professional help, go and get it. Go speak to a doctor or a therapist. And also, if you're already under the care of a mental health professional and you feel a worsening at the moment, then please reach out to them. So let's get into understanding anxiety and stress. And I think it's really useful to remember that we all experience it to some degree, whether we're late for a train or we've got a job interview. And that kind of stress and anxiety isn't necessarily bad because it can help us get into a peak state. But when it becomes an issue is when it becomes active regularly in our daily lives. However, what's key though, is to understand that whatever you're experiencing, it's not your body getting it wrong. It's actually an accurate response for whatever you're going through or whatever you have been through. So by far the most common causes of anxiety and stress are environmental causes, which means that it's something that's either happening to you or has happened to you. So you can have an acute type of stress and anxiety, which happens after a particular event, such as a car crash or some sort of trauma, or you can have chronic stress and anxiety, which is caused by exposure to situations which repeat repeatedly release stress hormones in your body. So if you feel like your stress and anxiety comes from an experience or something that happened to you in the past, then as well as working on yourself, definitely speak to a professional like a doctor or a therapist because they'll help you get through that. So as humans, we have innate needs. Like we know that we have physical needs. When we feel thirsty, we know we need hydration. When we feel hungry, we know we need food. But anxiety is a signal that our body is sending that we need to get a psychological need met. So our mental health is something we really do need to take seriously. But one thing I really do want to get across is that I know that some people start to feel like their mental illness is who they're becoming. But it's really important to remember that our brain is frantic about our survival. And so it sends out thoughts as biological matter in the same way that our heart pumps out blood around our body. So try your best not to feel defined by what your brain is saying because really all it's trying to do is let you know that you need to get some psychological needs met. So now let's talk about how our lifestyle plays a part in our anxiety and stress. So to truly understand how our lifestyle causes any issues, we've got to go back and remember that for the last two to 300,000 years, we've been living in small tribes of around 150 people. And we're still running off the programming and hardware that's been gradually built over those hundreds of thousands of years. So we haven't actually caught up to this modern way of living. So stress back then would be caused by something like getting attacked by a lion or another tribe. And our stress response, when it triggers, sends all these stress hormones like cortisol and cytokines and adrenaline through our body to get us into a peak state because it feels like there's a serious threat to our safety. But then that extreme situation would pass. You'd kill the lion or you'd escape the lion. And that's what our stress response is built for, the huge peak and then the drop off. But as Dr. Rongan Chatterjee says, we're not being attacked by a lion, we're being attacked by our lives. So if you feel like you wanna take a step towards reducing anxiety and stress by changing your lifestyle, but you don't really know where to start, 
quite a good place to be is just to think, are there any ways which you're living which are incredibly far away from how tribes lived? So are you getting out in nature enough? Are you connecting really with enough people? Are you getting enough exercise or are you relaxing enough? Okay, so let's get into the four main areas of our health, which is our sleep, our movement, our nutrition and relaxation. And I want to start with sleep because I feel like it's the most overlooked area of our health. You see, in our culture, we perpetuate this idea that doing more is better. But if you sleep more than you're weak, even short term sleep deprivation increases levels of inflammation and stress in our bodies. And I know sleep isn't normally one of those areas where we plan to make sure we get enough sleep and the right sleep. But when you're facing companies like Netflix, for example, who recently came out and said that their biggest competitor was sleep, and you've also got social media creating the endless scroll, then we've got a situation where we've got companies spending literally billions of pounds developing ways to keep us awake. So we're probably going to have to make some sort of effort to make sure that we are getting sleep. So a few things you can do then. Firstly, you can reduce the amount of caffeine you're having after noon. Caffeine, especially coffee, it stays in our system for up to 12 hours. So if you have a coffee at, let's say, 12 o'clock, it's like you're having a quarter shot of coffee just before you get into bed. And when you drink coffee, it definitely has quite similar symptoms to feeling anxious or stressed. So I'd say give reducing it a try and see if it makes a difference. So you can also set an alarm to remind you to start a bedtime routine. And I'd really recommend turning off any screens around 30 minutes to an hour before you go to sleep. And that means you can also read in bed, which can help you to relax and that will help trigger sleep. And lastly, the best way that I found of getting more sleep and falling asleep easier is to get early morning light. And this perfectly brings us on to exercising. Now, if you came to me and asked me for one thing to start doing to help reduce your stress and anxiety, it would have to be going out for a 20 minute walk without your phone. And that's because it does a bunch of different things in one. Firstly, any movement is anti-inflammatory. So that's going to straight up help reduce your anxiety and stress. And if you go out without your phone, then you're adding in a 20 minute mindfulness practice because as you walk you'll be letting your thoughts run but then you'll be consistently brought back into the present by the things that you encounter on your walk and because the sun emits a different type of light in the morning when you get out in it your body processes that as information and it tells your brain what type of sleeping pattern you want to be in this is called your circadian rhythm and if you do this regularly then your body will get better at falling asleep and also rising you with more energy and i know a common objection to doing something like this is i don't have time to spend spend 20 minutes on myself in the morning. But if it's you that's saying that, then it's you that needs this most. And also some sort of yoga or running I have found to really help me reduce my anxiety and stress. So I really recommend them as well. All right, let's get into nutrition. And I think you'll be surprised at how much of an impact the food that you eat has on your mental health. So to show this, there was a study done called the SMILES trial, which took a random group of people with depression and it gave half of the people social support, such as therapy, and the other got nutritional support. And having nutritional support meant that they were guided on having less processed foods, more vegetables, and more things like lentils, nuts, and seeds. Now, after an extended period, they found that 30% of the people on nutritional support had gone into full remission, which meant that they didn't have any symptoms of depression anymore whereas only 8% of the people who had social support. So it's really important not to underestimate how big an impact the food you eat has on your mental health. And so I personally find it empowering to know there's something so in our control, like our diet, that can have such a huge impact on reducing our mental health issues. So what I'd say is if you do want to reduce the amount of processed foods you have, just try cooking more home meals and then you'll get more whole foods that way. And then if you do want to reduce the amount of animal products you have, I just say give it a go and see if it has a positive effect on you. Okay, so let's talk about the last pillar of our health, relaxation. And why this is important is because instead of activating our fight or flight response, we need to take time to activate our relaxation response to balance out the stresses in our lives. Now I'm going to give some great ways for bringing in relaxation in the next section, but Whilst we're talking about lifestyle, I want to take a second to talk about our phone use and how that impacts our mental health. Now this needs a whole video in itself, but I don't think we can talk about our modern lives without talking about phones. And that's because every time you check your phone and there's a notification or an email or something like that, you get one, a small spike of dopamine, which is that addictive chemical, that hormone that makes us want something again, so it brings us back but it also spikes our cortisol level, and that is the stress hormone. So if you think we check our phones around 100 times a day, we're getting these continual micro stress doses, which when they add up day after day, they leave us in a constant state of fight or flight. And another thing to consider is the amount of information going into our brain. And as we talked before, anxiety works off a fear of uncertainty. So when we're reading things like the news a lot, 
those are things that we can't control. So that will rise up anxiety in us because there's a fear of something happening, but there's nothing we can actually do about it. And the same thing happens with social media. Comparison is actually a really dangerous thing for our mental health because it makes us feel no matter what we're doing, we could be doing more or there's better places we should be. And that could actually have a real impact on our mental health. So reducing your news and your social media intake will benefit you. But also remember that our brain is an organ, just like the gut, let's say. And if you were constantly feeding your gut loads and loads of food, it would give you problems. But the brain does the same thing. It has a limited capacity for the amount of information it can comfortably take. Now, these are worrying times. But if you find yourself worrying excessively, and especially if you're trying to get to sleep, there's something you can do which really helps called a worry period. And what this is, is where you dedicate a certain amount of time each day to sit down with a pen and paper and write down all of your worries. And what that can do is it can help you look at these things more objectively from a distance and consider are those worries and concerns, are they realistic? And also one thing you can do, which I have found so beneficial, is to charge your phone at night outside of your bedroom and just using an electric clock as an alarm clock. And then in the morning, you can try and spend a bit of time, whether that's half an hour or an hour before you check your phone. And I think you'll be surprised with how big an impact this small change has. Let me know below which of the key areas of your life you're gonna to start to work on first. People normally have one or two that really stand out to them. All right, so now I wanna talk about bringing in some daily self care and I know the term self-care has been almost commoditized but all it really means is taking some time to really care for yourself and as we know our effectiveness at helping the people around us and really doing anything to any good standard really depends on how we feel in ourselves so taking time to work on yourself to give yourself some self-care is so far from selfish because it's going to benefit you but also all of the people around you now i want to start with something a bit more general which is just to create a daily routine as we said before anxiety works off uncertainty so bringing in some daily routine it's going to bring some certainty into your life so getting up the same time every day eating your meals around the same time every day going to bed the same time every day and maybe even getting dressed properly. It's just gonna help you make things feel more normal and you're in control of those things. And having that consistency and structure, it's gonna allow you to bring in new helpful habits such as walking for 20 minutes in the morning. And if you wanna learn more about how to effectively bring in a new habit so that it sticks, I did a video on that last week. And talking about helpful habits, for me, I just think meditation is an absolute essential when it comes to mental health. I talk about all about how to bring in meditation in my meditation video up there. But for me, I brought it in when I was at my worst and I don't know where I'd be without it now. And one thing you can do to really help reduce anxiety and stress, especially when you're really feeling it, is to bring in some breathing techniques. The one that's had the biggest impact on me is the three, four, five, where you breathe in for three through your nose, you hold it for four, and then you let it out for five. And when your out breath is longer than your in breath, it sends signals to your brain that you are safe and you're thriving and you're okay and it helps reduce your stress and anxiety. Now if you're experiencing stress and anxiety I know how horrible a place it can be and it can feel quite lonely. I implore you just to speak to someone about it. Speaking about it it makes you feel better because you feel like you have support and there are people out there I guarantee that are willing and ready to listen to you, to support you and to help you and you're not weak for asking. I wish I'd chosen to speak to someone for that whole year when I was experiencing chronic stress and anxiety. And after I did, it just made the world of difference knowing that I had some support from people giving me some actionable steps I could take to reduce the stress and anxiety that I was going through. And I wanna suggest if you are feeling negative or feeling quite bad, one pretty much surefire way of making yourself feel better is reaching out and helping someone else. Whether that's supporting someone that you care about or reaching out to an old friend and just checking in with how they're doing. Anything like that is just gonna make you feel a lot better for having helped someone else. In summary, if you're experiencing any mental health issues, then you're not weak and you're not broken. Your body is accurately responding to a situation from the past or something you're going through or many things you're going through right now. And so this should set you on a journey to look into your lifestyle and see, how can I reduce anxiety and stress in any of these key areas? And lastly, just speak to someone about how you're feeling and they're gonna help you get back to where you want to be. So thank you so much for watching The Power of Helping. If you got something from the video, then please consider hitting the like and the subscribe button. And if you know someone going through any mental health issues at the moment and you feel like they can benefit, then consider sharing it with them. And next week's all about helping someone else when they feel anxious and when they're going through a panic attack. So I'll see you then. Bye.